Hello and welcome to The German Guy Reviews. I am The German Guy. Peter Maffay is a German musician who in the 80s made a concept album about a green dragon named Tabaluga. This nondescript little fella had an exploding success, so much so that it spawned a whole Tabaluga franchise. Multiple music albums, fairy tale books, a cartoon, a freaking 360 degree planetarium show. Welcome to the planetarium. And a movie, which we will get into in a minute. But first, what's the story overall? Little Tabaluga lives in a beautiful forever green land called... Uh... Greenland. But they are at constant war with their neighboring nation, a land of eternal snow and ice, ruled by Frosty the Snowman's evil twin brother, Arctos. Well, someone didn't pay attention in geography class, cause everybody knows Greenland is the cold one. Arctos hates Greenland for being, well, anything that he is not. You could say he is pretty much the... Ice King? Pause for laughter... Continue. And aside from that, I don't remember much from the cartoon. Only that I had a cassette of an episode once. It was a story about Tabaluga and his best friend, a bunny, getting stuck in the snow and almost freezing to death. The only other thing I remember were two episodes I watched on TV once. One where they tried to put out a forest fire with the wind of Tabaluga's wings, only to discover that that makes it actually worse. And the other was the season finale, where the two countries came to a peace agreement, deciding that there should be four seasons for all of them from now on, each season getting its fair amount of time throughout the year. Little did Arctos know that in that very moment, our top military scientists unleash their secret weapon to raise the global temperature. Which should finish him off for good in about 40 years. Anyway, looking at the list on Tabaluga-related media on the internet, I had no idea how popular he actually was, how much Tabaluga stuff there is, and how much his franchise is ever more expanding, even decades after he was created. And I'm pretty sure that if we had a proper video game industry in this country, we could have made a Spyro knockoff or something. But in that regard, we are kind of living in an Iron Rand novel. All creativity has to be eliminated. Anyway, movie time. We begin with a bit of backstory, telling us that once there was peace between Greenland and Iceland. Greenland being governed by the Dragonkin. But when Arctos gained power, all dragons disappeared and since that day the two lands are separated by a wall of clouds. That one is actually Jamaica's fault. Two dragon parents who are being hunted try to save their egg, but only the mother manages to escape. A crow named Colk finds her, and she tells him that her egg is the last one in the world, and her son is the only one that can protect them all from Arctos. And then she dies. Morphos always tell us to put on our sweaters, but when the literal lord of ice and snow is after them, they think they can sweat it off. Tabaluga then grows up under the watchful eyes of his feathery dad, teaching him how to fly, and, well, he tries to teach him how to spit fire, but where's the crow supposed to get its reference point? Don't tell me you never played around with a lighter and deodorant. Because I know I have. I love out of context stuff. He spends his days playing with his ladybug friend Bully, which gets its voice from Bully Herbig. Is that supposed to be clever? Because it is. Tabaluga is frustrated that he can't fly that good or spit fire. His father tells him that he can't rush nature and need to let things take its time. 
It's kind of like peeing your pants on purpose. What? Performance enhancing drugs it is. The young boy says fuck it and eats a bunch of poison ivy to provoke a flame coming out. It doesn't work. And to strengthen my own immunity system, I drank the leftover paint in the bucket that I found in the garage. Tabaluga is pissed more than ever. Bully tells him to cheer up and sings a song about who he is, which is the most optimistic bug in the world. This song is very bad. Not because it's badly sung or anything, although it only lasts for about 30 seconds, so what was the point? No, if you want to put a smile on your best friend's face, he needs to hear why he should have a positive attitude, not you having one. And he only thinks about how he already has this outlook on life, not how he got there or why he thinks it's good, which would have been a reason for me to say, yeah, I let that slide, I get it, take an example from me, kind of thing. But this comes across like, well, sucks to be you. I'm super, thanks for asking. Later that day, the two dudes find a message that his mother left Tabaluga, saying he needs to find his inner fire and protect them all from Arctos. But the problem is, over the years, much of the text became unreadable, so it only says Tabaluga, fire, Iceland. So he decides that he needs to go there. He flies through the clouds and a very heavy storm. Yeah, I can't fly correctly my ass. On the other side, they come across some guards and go hiding. They almost get spotted. <laughs> Two movie clips right after one another. I'm behaving like someone who has a bomb in his crotch at the airport while there are half a dozen police dogs around. Well, gotta make the most of the time before the upload filter comes. Oh, now I made myself sad. <sighs> I, I'm going to find a way, guys. Anyway, here comes something positive. Tawaluga hears a beautiful singing voice and goes investigating. What he finds is... Basically Elsa. Her name is Lily and she is a princess. How is she the only human in this world of talking animals? Fuck that dragon, I want to know her backstory. She introduces herself, telling them that she needs to bring them to Arctos right away. When they object that he is a monster, her reply is a confused look and the words, no, he is our great protector. Oh great, so this is basically North Korea but in cold. Let me guess, an ice phoenix once dropped a carrot and that got a snowball rolling, which gave birth to this guy. And he also doesn't poop. Bully and Lily have a fight, not trusting each other and calling the other one a beast or a monster, only to be calmed down by our dragon, pointing out that it seems all sides have a very absurd view of one another. Boo! Liberal cock! Not based! Blood in the street. In all seriousness, I love this. I really do. This is a message that needs to be taught more often. Spoilers, we will later find out that Arctos is a 100% organic, unfair trade villain. The message here of course being that a leader of a group might be evil with evil intentions, but he must not necessarily represent or share the values and ideas with people in that group. But for everything great, there has to be something awful as well, of course. That being this ice bear named Limbo, who joins the group and the best way to describe him is if Full House was a person. I hate him, I want him gone, I want everything that is like him to go extinct. And by that I mean TV shows and ice bears. They arrive at Arctos Palace, named Polaris, and wait a second, there are bunnies in Iceland? There are also bunnies in Greenland. Your racism doesn't make sense. Terribly. I only friends with the Japanese and just between you and me, they don't look very Aryan. The Lord of Low Temperatures shows up. Arctos finds out that Tubby Boy doesn't have his fire yet. But a rejected villain from the Thor movie says he can help him. Onda Polaris is a source of dragon fire. He just needs to follow him down to his basement. And while you are at it, could you please swallow one of these pills and put a sack over your head? Oh, this is going into my collection.
Arctos lies to the other ones, telling them that only dragons are allowed into the cave with the eternal flame, otherwise the flame will go out. Bully, being the only smart one in the group, tells them, well, if only dragons are allowed, why does Arctos follow him? Well, I am made from dragon tears and sweat. In a scene that reminds me a bit of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, we see that the cave is really a dumping ground for all the frozen dragon bodies Arctos has collected over the years. Lily runs in, trying to save her new friend, while Arctos sings his I am so villainous villain song. Limbo distracts Arctos while the little ice girl cries in front of Tabaluga's body, apologizing, saying she didn't know what he was going to do. And they make it sound like as if they knew each other for a lifetime. I mean, they barely know each other over half a day and Tabaluga was saying in an earlier scene that Lily would never ever betray him. On the other hand, this movie is for children of age zero upwards and at that point you experience time a lot slower than you do as an adult. It's like the human body wants to say, yeah, the best is already over, let's get this over with. I want to eject your soul from this cockpit as quickly as possible. The World of Warcraft Elemental returns and chases our heroes. They arrive at an impasse and the only choice to get out is for the young dragon to fly. It first looks like as if they were heading straight for the ground, but then Lily gives our friendly dragon a wing boner. And so they escape. Or so they think. Arctos is not done with them yet and still chases them. With his last breath, Lizard Airwaves crosses the border. The Dark Lord returns for a third round. Reminiscent of a horror movie at this point. But the heat takes its toll on him and he realizes he can't harm them here. So he swears his vengeance will be terrible. The community gathers around and witnesses the arrival of an Icelander in their midst. Kill it! Kill it with fire! Or salt! Many of the preconceptions are cleared up between the two peoples. Arctos, in the meantime, does the opposite on his land. He tells the Iceland population that Tabaluga kidnapped Lily in order to provoke a war between the kingdom and... I believe Greenland might be a stateless commune, cause no one among them is ever established as a leader. And here comes the love song between a dragon and a human. Great, it's Sonic 2006 all over again. Limbo warns his friends about the incoming danger. In turn, Lily decides to go back and tell her people the truth. Tabaluga insists to come with her. But his crowded interrupts them, saying the only thing that can truly stop Arctos is Dragonfire. But in order to find it, his son needs to talk to a great wise turtle named Nessiah. The reason why Kolk never told him about her before is because it's only possible to visit her once. So he needed to be sure he is ready. Well, that's a stupid rule. What if I walked into her home asking for directions only to learn that she could have revealed my life's purpose? Lily inexplicably becomes very mean, asking mockingly if she needs to be there to hold his hands and other things. She did this, she later tells Limbo, because she knows Tabaluga would have never let her go alone back to Iceland, so she had to push him away. You could have just told him that you stay in Greenland where you would be safe and then head in Arctos direction as soon as he was out of sight. That way you wouldn't have hurt his feelings and potentially jeopardize the mission. Our little ice girl then sings a sad song about how sorry she is while Limbo follows her and stares at her with the expression that sums up his entire being. Duh. Be that as it may, Tabaluga gets some advice from the great Messiah, telling him his fire isn't something that is somewhere to be found in the world. Fire is the friends we made along the way. Oh yeah, she gets it! But Tabaluga doesn't and leaves. Meanwhile, Arctos army arrives with tons of snow in order to literally pave the way. Limbo tries to sneak Lily across because the army is way too obedient to Arctos. She has to talk to the people of Iceland directly. But they get caught and brought back. Meanwhile, Tabaluga is pissed that the evil snowman is coming and apparently there is nothing he can do. Bully shortly later informs his best friend that Lily has gone back. The green dragon immediately puts the puzzle pieces together and figures out why she was mean to him. Yet he doesn't understand the turtle's metaphorical speech? He decides that none of that matters now. He will save his friend with or without his fire. 
back at Polaris, Arctos reveals that he was the one who created Lily in order to be a trap for the last dragon. So you gave life to her knowing about Tabaluga's special kink? Our hero arrives ready to save the princess. Tabaluga runs straight into the obvious trap. Limbo breaks them free and another Arctos chase scene ensues. In the process, the evil king destroys his own palace. Mr. Freeze then later traps Lily once again and says he will kill her and make Tabaluga watch. In that moment, however, Tabaluga's inner fire awakens. That would make a great Windows background picture. Fighting for a bit and then realizing that he can't win, Arctos goes for the good old self-destruct your own base option. However, it's not over. Tabaluga is out of energy, unlike the snowman, who reveals to the entire populace his true evil self. Lily, who of course made it out alive, since when is being buried on a collapsing building something dangerous, come on people, grabs Arklos' head and makes him blind. Finally, having enough of his white shit, Tabaluga sets him on fire and shrinks him down. His people also had it. He declares in response, one day, the mighty Arklos will be back. Yori. With weapons. Peace is made between the two nations and everyone is having a good time. The end. And that was Tabaluga the movie. Pretty mediocre. But okay. This is definitely more a kids movie than a family movie. Some of the gags are straight up kindergarten jokes like look at my butt, look at my butt. Comedy wise there's nothing for older people here. In the animation department, it looks a bit better. It's not a masterpiece or anything, no pixel levels, but it's pleasant to look at and clearly more effort was put into it than a CGI episodic series would have. I do miss some of the characters that I grew up with, however. Of course, as I said, I remember the cartoon not vividly, but some of it. Like, there was this cool wise old that Arctos had as his vizier, who also was his prisoner, but he let himself get captured on purpose so that he could keep an eye on the chili dictator and undermine his plans. That was pretty unique. Most of all, I appreciate the message of different people coming together to overcome arbitrary borders and how there are those who use our fears as their tool. Lord knows that's something we need to hear more often than ever. The German guy out and auf Wiedersehen.